powers. A corporation can only enter into transactions within its powers. The powers of corporation may either be express powers. Those powers expressly conferred upon the corporation by law and or by its articles of incorporation. Implied powers. Those essential or necessary to carry out its purpose or purposes as stated in the Articles of Incorporation and Incidental Powers. The powers inherent in the corporation as a legal entity and as such, they exist independently of the express powers. Remember the three powers of corporation. It may either be express, implied, or incidental powers. Doctrine of Limited Capacity No corporation shall possess or exercise corporate powers other than those conferred by this code or by the articles of a corporation and except as necessary or incidental to the exercise of the powers conferred. A corporation cannot do acts which are unlawful, neither that it can do acts which are beyond its powers to perform. Ultra Vires Act An Ultra Vires Act is an act which is not within the corporate powers conferred by the corporation code or articles of incorporation or not necessary or incidental in the exercise of the powers conferred. This is with reference to Section 44 of RA 11232. However, even if the Act is considered as ultra vires Act, there are instances that these Acts can be subject of ratification. What are the requisites for ratification of ultra vires Act? Number one, the Act or contract must be consummated, not merely executed. Number two, the creditors are not prejudiced, or all of them have given their consent. Number three, the right of the public or the state are not involved. And number four, all the shareholders must give their consent. How do we distinguish ultra vires acts from unlawful acts? ultra vires acts are not illegal but merely beyond the powers of the corporation to perform. These acts are voidable and produces effects. Being voidable, this can be ratified. While unlawful acts are against the law, morals, public order, or public policy, void and non-existing, and cannot produce legal effects. Void contracts, cannot be ratified. The corporate powers as provided for in Section 35. These are the express powers provided for in the Code. These include to sue and be sued in its corporate name, to have perpetual existence, unless the Certificate of Incorporation provides otherwise, to adopt and use a corporate seal, to amend its Articles of Incorporation in accordance with the provisions of the Code, to adopt by laws not contrary to law, morals, or public policy, and to amend or repeal the same in accordance with the Code. In case of stock corporations, to issue or sell stocks to subscribers and to sell treasury stocks in accordance with the code and to admit members to the corporation if it be a non-stock corporation. To purchase, receive, take or grant, hold, convey, sell, lease, pledge, 
mortgage, and otherwise deal with such real and personal property, including securities and bonds of other corporations, as the transaction of the lawful business of the corporation may reasonably and necessarily require, subject to the limitations prescribed by law in the Constitution. To enter into a partnership, joint venture, merger, consolidation, or any other commercial agreement with natural and juridical persons. To make reasonable donations, including those for the public welfare or for hospital, charitable, cultural, scientific, civic, or similar purposes, provided that no foreign corporation shall give donations in aid of any political party or candidate for purposes of partisan political activity. To establish pension, retirement, and other plans for the benefit of its directors, trustees, officers, and employees. And to exercise such other powers as may be essential or necessary to carry out its purpose or purposes, as stated in the Articles of Incorporation. Again, I repeat, these are the express corporate powers provided for in the law. Implied powers. These are powers necessary in furtherance of the express powers. Acts in the usual course of business. Acts to protect debts due to the corporation. Acts which involve embarking on a different line of business. Acts designed to protect or aid employees. And acts to increase the business of the corporation. Incidental powers are those powers inherent in the existence of the corporation. And these include the powers of succession, powers to have a corporate name, Power to adopt a corporate seal. Power to acquire, hold, or dispose property as its business may reasonably require. And power to adopt and amend its bylaws. What is our rule in case of donation to political parties or candidates? Under the new law, domestic corporations may now donate to political parties or candidates. However, foreign corporation is still prohibited. Problem. Corona Getaway Inc., a stock corporation engaged in leasing of real properties. An investor offered to its board of directors the financing for the building and operations of a tertiary school. Is the corporation allowed? to engage in school operations. Remember the doctrine of limited capacity, that a corporation can only act or enter into transactions within the limits of its authority, within the limits of its powers, either the express powers as provided for in the code or in the articles of incorporation, specifically the purpose, primary purpose, and the secondary purposes, or the implied powers as well as the incidental powers. Considering that Corona Getaway is engaged in leasing of real properties and engaging in school operations is outside the authority conferred by the state to the said corporation. Corona Getaway cannot engage in school operations. Let us discuss the specific corporate powers. The power to extend or shorten corporate term as provided in Section 36 of the law. Remember that this will only apply if there is a specific term provided in the Articles of Incorporation. Because if the Articles of Incorporation is silent, the corporation already has perpetual 
existence. The power to extend or shorten corporate term can be done provided that this is with the approval of majority vote of the board of directors or trustees and ratified at a meeting by the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock or two-thirds of its members. This is one of those instances that a stockholder or shareholder can exercise his appraisal right in case he dissent to the decision of the corporation to extend or shorten corporate term. The use of electronic data messages in sending of notice of meeting is already allowed under the new law. A certificate must be signed by majority of the directors of the corporation and countersigned by the chairperson and secretary of the stockholders' meeting. Power to increase or decrease capital stock under Section 37. This must be approved by SEC and the Philippine Competition Commission. This must be accompanied with sworn statement of treasurer showing that at least 25% of the increase in capital stock has been subscribed and that at least 25% of the amount subscribed has been paid in actual cash or property and the paid up should not be less than 5,000 pesos. Again, the 25% 25% rule only applies in case of increase in capital stock made after incorporation. There is no more minimum subscription required under the new law in the incorporation of a corpo. No decrease in capital stock shall be approved by SEC if it will prejudice the rights of corporate creditors. The power to deny preemptive right under Section 38. What is preemptive right? Preemptive right refers to the right of existing stockholders to purchase or subscribe to all issuances or disposition of shares of any class in proportion to their respective stock holdings before such shares are offered to the public. The reason for preemptive right is to maintain the equity control of existing stockholders. The general rule, stockholders are entitled to preemptive right. But I would like you to memorize the exceptions to this general rule. Exceptions when denied in the articles of incorporation, when the shares are issued in compliance with laws requiring stock offerings or minimum stock ownership by the public, or when the shares are issued in good faith with the approval of stockholders representing two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock in exchange for property needed for corporate purposes or in payment of previously contracted debt. Question. ABC Corporation has authorized capital stock of 10 million comprising of 100,000 shares at 100 pesos per share. That 50,000 shares out of 100,000 shares were initially offered to subscribers and all of which were subscribed equally by A, B, C, and D for 12,500 shares each. Subsequently, the corporation offered the subscription of the remaining capital stock. What is the right granted to A, B, C, and D under the corporation code? Our answer, letter C, preemptive right. This is a right granted to existing stockholders or shareholders to be given the chance to subscribe for the unissued capital stock before it will be issued to the public. 
sale or other disposition of assets under Section 39. A sale or other disposition should be deemed to cover substantially all the corporate property and assets if the corporation would be rendered incapable of continuing the business or accomplishing the purpose for which it was incorporated. What is the voting requirement? Majority vote of the board of directors or trustees in a meeting constituting a quorum and ratified likewise at a meeting by the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock or two-thirds of its members. Power to acquire own shares under Section 40. Our rule, a corporation can only acquire its own shares provided that it has unrestricted retail earnings. The acquisition must be for legitimate corporate purposes, such as to eliminate fractional shares arising out of stock dividends, to collect or compromise an indebtedness, to pay dissenting or withdrawing stockholders entitled to appraisal right under Section 80. To acquire treasury shares under Section 9, to effect a decrease in capital stock in Section 37, to purchase or take up redeemable shares under Section 8, and when the SEC orders a closed corporation to purchase the shares of stockholders in case of deadlock in its management under Section 104. In the last two instances, particularly to purchase or take up redeemable shares, and in case to break the deadlock in the management of a closed corporation, the corporation can acquire its own shares even without an restricted retail earnings. The general rule, a corporation cannot acquire its own shares if there is no funds from the unrestricted retail earnings. A corporation cannot declare dividends in the absence of unrestricted retail earnings. Exemptions in two cases. Number one, to purchase or take up redeemable shares. And number two, when SEC orders a closed corporation to purchase the shares of stockholders in case of deadlock in its management. What is the NEL doctrine? The general rule is that the transfer of all assets of a corporation to another shall not render the latter liable to the liabilities of the transferor. So simply put, a transferee as a general rule is not liable to the obligations of the transferor. Exceptions to this doctrine. Number one, the transferee corporation expressly or impliedly agrees to assume the transferor's debts. This is in case of a written agreement. Number two, in case of merger or consolidation. And can we add up as an, another exception to this doctrine? In case of conversion of OPC to stock corporation or stock corporation to a one-person corporation. Trust fund doctrine. The capital stock and assets of the corporation are held in trust for creditors. Accordingly, there shall be no distribution of assets to shareholders until the claims of creditors have been paid or an appropriation of such assets has been made for the payment of such claims. When the corporation is insolvent, the trust fund encompasses not only the subscription to the capital stock, but also other property and assets of the corporation. The reversal 
of the additional paid-in capital and its reinvestment as capital or subsequent conversion into a loan, which is considered a reduction of the corporate fund, is a violation of the trust fund doctrine. Question. The doctrine initiated in the corporation law, which considers the subscribed capital for the payment of debts of the corporation. Letter A, trust fund doctrine. Letter B, nil doctrine. Letter C, business judgment rule. And letter D, doctrine of separate juridical personality. Our answer, letter A, trust fund doctrine. Power to invest corporate funds in another corporation or business for any other purpose under Section 41. Voting requirement. Majority vote of the board of directors or trustees in a meeting held for the purpose wherein they constitute a quorum and ratified at a meeting by the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock or two-thirds of its members. This is also one of those instances that a stockholder can exercise his appraisal right if he dissent to the decision of the corporation to invest the corporate funds in another corporation or business different from the purpose of the corporation. Approval of the stockholders or members shall not be necessary if the investment by the corporation is reasonably necessary to accomplish its primary purpose. Problem. ABC Corporation is engaged in land transportation business and would like to expand by investing in the acquisition of more vehicles, which was approved by the majority of the directors in a meeting held for the said agenda. In the implementation, a stockholder, Charles, assailed the decision on the expansion and argued that the board should have sought the approval of the stockholders. Is the contention of Charles correct? The position of Charles is not meritorious. The expansion by investing in the acquisition of more vehicles is in line with the primary purpose of the ABC Corporation, which is engaged in land transportation business. Therefore, in this case, there is no need to concur or for the approval of the stockholders. Dividend. Dividend is the share of the stockholder or shareholder in the earnings of the corporation. It is the corporate profit set aside, declared, and ordered by the directors to be paid to the stockholders on demand or at a fixed time. Dividend may vary in many forms. It may either be cash dividend, property dividend, stock dividend, bond dividend, script dividend, liquidating dividend, or even composite dividend. But so simply put, dividend is the share of the stockholder or the shareholder in the earnings of the corporation. Stock corporations are prohibited from retaining surplus profits in excess of the 100% of the paid-in capital. This is the reason why in taxation, we have a form of a penalty tax we call as the improperly accumulated earnings tax. And it is presumed that if a corporation has unrestricted retained earnings exceeding 100% of the paid-in capital, the corporation is improperly accumulating its earnings. Board of Directors can declare dividends only from unrestricted retained earnings. Stock corporations are prohibited from retaining surplus profits in excess of 100% of the paid-in capital, except in the following cases. When justified by definite corporate expansion projects or programs approved by the Board of Directors, when the corporation is prohibited 
under any loan agreement with a financial institution without its consent. And if such retention is necessary under special circumstances and there is need for special reserve for probable contingencies. Distinction between cash and stock dividend under Section 42. Cash dividend. The declaration requires only the majority vote of the directors in a meeting constituting a common. Approval of the directors is sufficient in issuance and declaration of cash dividend. While in case of stock dividend, the declaration must be approved by the majority vote of the directors with the concurrence of stockholders representing two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. What is the reason behind? Now, in case of our stockholders or shareholders, if you would like to have a share in the earnings, what you would like to have is cash or property instead of stock dividend. Also, another distinction, cash dividend. Any cash dividend due on delinquent stock shall first be applied to the unpaid balance on the subscription plus cost and expenses. In case of stock dividend, any stock dividend shall be withheld from the delinquent stockholder until his unpaid subscription is fully paid. Another distinction, cash and or property dividend, this is taxable. While stock dividend, this is, as a general rule, exempt from income tax. Power to enter into management contract under Section 43. The voting requirement, majority vote of the board of directors or trustees, and ratify that a meeting by the stockholders representing majority of the outstanding capital stock or majority of the members. However, let us qualify. Two-thirds vote based on outstanding capital stock by the stockholders or two-thirds of members is required. If the board of directors constitute a majority of both the managed and managing corporations, or if the shareholders own or control at least one-third of the capital stock. This is in case of interlocking directors or stockholders. The voting re requirement is two-thirds vote based on the outstanding capital stock or two-thirds of members. The period of the contract shall not exceed five years for any given term. A new provision in RA 11232 provides that no management contract shall be entered into for a period longer than five years for any one term. Merger or consolidation covered by Section 75 to 79 of RA 11232. In merger consolidation, the corporations participating in the merger consolidation are called as the constituent corporations. But how do we distinguish merger from consolidation? In merger, a corporation absorbs the other corporation. And we call the uh, corporation absorbing the other as the surviving corporation. As an illustration, a corporation plus B incorporated equals B incorporated. B incorporated absorb A corporation and B incorporated is considered as the surviving corporation. In consolidation, a new corporation is formed. We call as the consolidated corporation. As an illustration, A corporation plus B incorporated equals C Corp. C Corp is a new corporation and this is consolidated corporation. Let us discuss the steps in merger consolidation. First, the board of directors or trustees of constituent corporations 
will convene and approve a plan of merger or consolidation. Majority vote of the board of directors or trustees in a meeting wherein they constitute a quorum is necessary. The plan of merger consolidation will be submitted to the stockholders or members for approval and the vote of at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock or two-thirds of the members shall be necessary for the approval of the plan. If the stockholders or members approve, they will draft the articles of merger or consolidation. This is signed by the president or the vice president and certified by the corporate secretary. And the articles of merger or consolidation will be submitted to SEC for approval. Once approved, the Securities and Exchange Commission will issue a certificate of merger consolidation in favor of the surviving or the consolidated company.